Welcome to the Barrel Chat Podcast, where we provide an unfiltered look into the craft beer industry from the untrained palates of two dumbass outsiders. I am Matthew Muncie, and usually I am joined by Dustin Wood, but I am flying solo today, and this is the first episode of the Friday Four Pack. And what that is, is every Friday I plan on bringing you four different topics. What that's going to look like is one, just kind of talking about what I've been drinking throughout the week, uh, any of the breweries that I've hit, places that I've gone, maybe talking a little bit uh, local, you know, food, stuff like that. I'm a fat guy, so I love food. I love uh, trying out new restaurants and stuff. So just trying to keep it local there. Then I plan on bringing uh, two news stories that I have found throughout the week. If they're local, they're local. If not, it is what it is. And then rounding out every episode, uh, trying to bring you what's coming up in the next week, two, three, you know, month or so uh, throughout Indiana. So whether that's like events that I'm able to find um, happening for for breweries, you know, like like Death and Taxes is coming up. So stuff like that or any cool releases that they're doing, especially like uh, bottle releases or or specialty beer releases, things like that. I want to try and uh, make sure everybody hears about those. So, uh, you know, that's that's the plan for these episodes. Uh, before we jump into this one, you can follow us on Instagram. We are at Barrel Chat. Uh, if you love our podcast, please take a moment to leave us a five star rating on your favorite podcast app. That feedback does help us improve. Let's us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and eventually it will help us reach more listeners. We'd also love to hear from you if, if there is a particular beer you'd like us to review. Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at barrelchatpodcast at gmail.com and let us know. I went uh, to Chicago this past weekend for C2E2, which is a comic book convention. It's a nerdy convention if you've uh, ever heard of like San Diego Comic Con or uh, Indie Comic Con? Basically the same thing, just a bunch of nerdy stuff. But on my way up, I had to stop at Foreign Locals. So most of you probably know episode 12, we did Foreign Locals Ghost Chant, which was a super amazing sour beer that they made. And I really just couldn't stop thinking about Foreign Local. Like, I had this amazing beer. I needed more. Dust and I then, uh, this past weekend when we, or this past week when we recorded um, the latest episodes, we ended up drinking uh, one of their American dry stouts. And it was just fantastic. And I was like, okay, I've got to get up to Foreign Local. It's on the way. It was like a 20 minute detour. The only thing that sucked was we were driving in all of that uh, tornadic weather that we had come in uh, last Friday. And so, that kind of sucked, but it also gave us a reprieve from the insane traffic that all of that weather was causing. So it worked out. It was it was the perfect stop. And because of the storm, it wasn't super busy. So we got, you know, perfect service. It's a great way to see what kind of service you're going to get a busy night. You know, you may or may not get great service on a night that's not so busy. You expect great service. And and we got that. So the the first beer I wanted to talk about was actually the one I mentioned that Dustin and I had off air. Uh, It was called Suspended in the Sky. It's an American dry stout with Brazilian coffee beans from Small Town Coffee Company, which is up in Crown Point, Indiana. I'm telling you, man, that that beer did not miss. It had great coffee flavor, that that perfect dry stout mouthfeel and flavor profile that you would expect out of that. Um, I, I can't say I've had too many dry stouts that weren't Irish dry stouts. Uh, like the one that Sun King makes. But I really enjoyed just everything about this beer and only had the one can, but it was it was perfect. Dustin got it at Total Wine, so I'm hoping that maybe maybe there's some more. I, I haven't asked, and I probably should, like, what do they consider a house beer? Do they even have house beers? Because, I mean, this one's made with coffee. So, like, do they... I didn't see, like, an American just dry stout or even just a stout on their lineup so they feel like they're they're probably going to be just a bit more exotic with their beers and, and churning out different stuff instead of keeping anything um normally on tap which i mean not a bad way to go to be honest this one's uh 5.8 percent abv 
a three point seven eight on Untapped. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I think that's super low because that that beer tasted really good, and my thought was it's a dry stout, and based on what I know with Untapped's ratings and how many people do like, oh, it's a one because I don't like stouts, or it's a one because this doesn't taste like a normal stout. It's like it's not going to. It's a dry stout. I could see that that style just not being enjoyed by a lot of people. And you don't really know what you're going to get out of it because not many people make a dry stout. So I, I could see why it probably has a lower rating because it, it's not a low rating, in my opinion, based on taste. And this is, this is a perfect example of, you know, sorry, Dustin, but this is why I stopped using Untapped was because this is a beer that I would look at back in the day and say, well, it's lower than a four. Well, I'm not going to get this. And I'd miss out on a great beer, all because the the untaps rating system is broken in a way that people can leave half star, one star, and it has nothing to do with the actual beer itself. It's because they don't like the style or something. It, it's kind of really stupid, and I know we've talked about it, and I'm sure everybody and their brother has talked about it at this point. Not sure how you fix it, but it is a reason that I've kind of stopped using untapped for looking up what what beers are actually good and should I buy it and stuff like that. So when I made made my way up this past week uh, to Foreign Local, uh, just to kind of point out some things, it's a really small brewery. Like that tap room was super tiny. I, I wasn't expecting anything big. My assumption is I bet it was like a, a an auto garage. It also had that kind of setup to it. So it wouldn't shock me if it was something like that. But the way it was laid out was super nice, super convenient. Um, lots of space for, you know, it, there wasn't like a ton of of places to sit, like if it was a busy night. But, you know, it it at least makes it work. I mentioned the the service we got. I know part of that is because it was slow. But as I mentioned, like, I've been places that are slow with not a lot of people and you still get really bad service just because the person working just sucks. But the bartender we had was amazing. She was super friendly, super helpful. There was a leak that happened uh, because of all the rain, like this really bad leak coming through a window, you know, and she had to like deal with that and and trying to get people to to move because there was water everywhere, like starting to go under people's tables and stuff. It kind of became a little chaotic there for a minute, but, you know, cool under pressure and was still just super friendly, super helpful. Just, it's something that whenever you have an amazing experience from from your server, your bartender, whoever it may be, it really just makes that experience more memorable. And I and I feel like that gets lost with some people because not a lot of people necessarily love their job when it comes to being a bartender or a server or something like that. And that shows. And this one, I, I it definitely felt like she loved doing what she was doing. I think. My buddy and I might have been the only non-locals in the place at that point. There were a few people who worked there, but then everyone that we kind of talked to all mentioned being from the region, which if you don't know is Northwest Indiana. They call it the region. I don't know the story behind that, but I've heard it used multiple times. But everybody was super friendly, very talkative. They they kind of made you feel like part of the group instead of outsiders, and nobody was was like, you know, oh, you're from Indianapolis. You know, there wasn't any snottiness to it. There, there wasn't anything like that. And it was just super nice. Not that I would expect that from from people in the region for any reason, but like you just didn't get that feeling. There was no no feeling of being being not from the region. It was just a another part of the experience that outside of the beer just kind of made it more fun. I I, I like that because you don't get that everywhere. From a beer perspective, I, I got to say Foreign Local sort of reminds me of Deviate a lot um, with their unique take on on the beer styles and the ingredients, stuff like that. It, that was kind of the vibe I was getting with the beers I was I was lo- trying and, you know, you're looking through the list and there's not really like just a, they, they had a few beers that, that were just kind of vanilla, like a, a Kolsch or a, a lager. But for the most part, everything was kind of a little crazy. And you're like, okay, this is good. Especially when the crazy tastes good. That's That to me is, is a big hit. 
So I did a flight, which was three beers. Um, they came in like these unique style glasses. All of their glasses are unique. If you go on their Instagram, they have some crazy looking glasses. There's one that looks like a martini glass. I have no idea what the hell it is. And I want one really bad just because they look so cool. It also seemed like they would just pour beers. Like if you got a beer, it feels like they just get poured into random <laughs> glasses all the time. Because if you look on Untap, people will post about drinking a certain beer and then you look at the photos and like every photo is like a different style glass. So that was something that was kind of unique too, but they poured them in these, in these uh, almost like a champagne flute type looking glasses. The best way I can describe it. Uh, stimulus version. And they just, they looked so beautiful coming off, off that draft line. Uh, I would say if you uh, find our, our Instagram and just take a look at the photos, it, it's super easy to know which photo I'm talking about because you're going to you're going to see an orange one uh and then two darker ones and you're just going to be like oh wow those look really good and that's from foreign local. So the first one I tried was a tangerine marshmallow kush which was a milkshake style IPA with tangerine, marshmallow, vanilla and lactose. First off, beautiful pour. Great orange color. That foam had a slight orange tint to it. Just it was almost like artwork. I'm not going to lie. Like there was something about it that's like, if you could paint me this photo of these three beers, it would be so cool looking and I would buy it. It was just, I don't know, something very beautiful about it that you just don't see a lot with, with beer nowadays. Uh, this was also my first milkshake IPA in 2018, 2019. I can't tell you last time I, ha I actually had a milkshake IPA. I'm sure I've probably had one since then but I certainly do not remember it. But this matched exactly what I remember them being. You know, back then, they were super popular. That was around the time that everybody had milkshake IPAs everywhere. And, you know, you had your hits or misses, but the ones that were really good really kind of gave you that milkshake IPA, similar to what the slushy series is nowadays, but not not so heavy on the on the fruit and stuff like that. So this one was was fantastic. I loved I loved the look of it. I loved the taste of it. It had that that IPA flavor but still had all the milkshake creamy components to it. This one's a 8% ABV, 4.1 on untap. You know, that that's a pretty dead on. Maybe a 4.25 for me if I was rating this, but 4 it seems perfectly fair in this instance. It's it's not something I don't feel like a milkshake IPA is ever going to wow you, but I think when they're brewed and blended perfectly or really well, you know, that's, that's what you're looking for. And, and I think they nailed it in my opinion. The second one I had was mother's milk, which was their American dry stout poured on a nitrogen faucet. Uh, so it was dry, roasty and malty. So I already had the American dry stout, which was that suspended in the sky, but that one had coffee. This one didn't have coffee in it. It just had the nitrogen and I think it gave it an even more unique mouthfeel because you had that dry, that dry stout, that, that dry mouthfeel mixed with like a creamy. So it was like this creamy dry. I don't know, man. It, it, it's just wild what some of these things do to, to beer and how it creates a unique experience that you don't really know what to expect sometimes. Like when I saw it, I'm like, how is a, a nitrogen going to play with the dry stout? I loved it. Um, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not super fond of nitrogen beers. Um, I think people get a little too crazy with it. The, the creaminess is interesting, but at the same point can be a little off putting. Um, this one, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I think one, the, the base beer of it was already good anyways. And adding the nitrogen isn't anything crazy, but it, it added a unique mouthfeel to it that just kind of expanded it a little bit more. Now this one did have a, a 3.72 on untapped and, not going to lie that that does feel about appropriate and and I would say that I think the nitrogen sort of takes away from the rating a bit just because you're you're not getting that full experience with the dry stout and the nitrogen kind of adding its unique mouthfeel to it like it maybe doesn't isn't always the best and while this was good I don't think it was amazing and you know, I, I do feel like the nitrogen on the coffee version might might be damn good. 
you know, you get, you kind of, you do that, uh, almost like a nitrogen cold brew. I know it's not the same, but like, I don't know, that, that would be an interesting take to see. Uh, the last one I had was <laughs> one I saw on their Instagram and, and was one of the main, you know, outside of just wanting to go to foreign local. I was like, I have to go try this beer. Uh, it was blueberry breakfast dead forever, an imperial stout with blueberries, maple syrup, cinnamon, and coffee. I have in my notes here, in all caps, what's not to love. And that's the truth. I, I love pastry stouts um, that, that actually kind of taste like something. So this one reminded me of blueberry pancakes. I do love a good pancake stout, and you don't get a lot of them. And I feel like sometimes when people are like, this is a pancake stout, it never hits those notes. But when people are just trying to go for like a breakfast one, it's it's a lot of what reminds you of that. And and a lot of this is the blueberry and the maple syrup really reminding you of that. I don't really remember getting much of the coffee. I don't really taste cinnamon and beers that I'm aware of. Um, that's a just a, a me thing. But this I liked. And I think it was blended perfectly together because what I found a lot of times is that pastry beers can be like way too damn sweet. Especially when mixed with the stout, since you know stouts can come out kind of sweet with that with that chocolate flavor, and sometimes the pastries just don't blend well. This one, for me, was blended great. There was no overpowering of the sweetness. You still got a bit of that stout that came through. It, I liked it. I, I really, 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 really liked this beer. I brought some back, so Dustin and I are definitely going to have this on a podcast, so that way we can kind of discuss it because I liked it that much. Uh, it's 11% ABV, a 4.38 on untapped. I'd give it a five, a 4.5. I do understand probably why it's a little bit lower, because not everyone's going to enjoy this. I mean, it's a pastry stout. You don't really know what you're getting into, because they call it an imperial stout, but when you're dumping all this stuff into it, it's, it's basically a pastry stout. And I feel like some people might not enjoy the sweetness of it and stuff like that, but Four and a half is definitely where I would go. Um, so that was all All I had at Foreign Local. I did. I brought back um, the Blueberry Breakfast, Dead Forever, a couple cans of that. They were, it was like 16 bucks, I think, for like two 16-ounce two, uh, cans or something. And then I bought a, um, a glass that uh, you've probably seen on our Instagram. It's the one I post with uh, the little, like, uh, Reaper-looking dude. That glass is fucking awesome. I love that glass. I spent 30, 30 bucks before tip, and I had a flight. I bought those two beers, and I bought that glass. That's fucking cheap, man. To me, that seemed very cheap for what I got and the service I got and everything else. So uh, shout out Foreign Local. Keep it up. I am excited to make my way back up there uh, here in the near future because it's, it's well worth that two-hour drive. Uh, so then once we ended up getting to Chicago, it was time to eat. Uh, the buddy that we were meeting up there, uh, he took us to a place called Hopleaf Bar. Uh, so this is somewhere, I don't know exactly where in Chicago, to be honest. But uh, we went to Hopleaf Bar. Their tagline, promoting better beers, wines, and spirits in Chicago since 1992. They have a ton of Belgian beers and then Belgian-inspired food. What sold me when our buddy was asking us, like, hey, is there any places you'd like to go? He had he had mentioned this place because of their robust beer list and, and knowing that I'm a, a the beer nerd I am, he was just like, I think you would like this. I took one look at their food menu and saw they had a brisket Reuben. I was like, We're we're going here. I don't care about the beer. I'm trying this brisket Reuben. You're you're marrying two things that I, I really enjoy uh together. This has to be amazing. And so we went and to be honest, all the other Rubens have been ruined for me. Um, I had the uh, Rausch Doppelbach from Dovetail Brewing. Uh, just another ridiculously good uh, beer. And I love Rausch beers. And this was a 9.1% ABV Rausch beer. Just fantastic. Nice smoky flavor. Nice boozy finish. It paired perfect with that brisket Reuben. So uh, 10 out of 10 would 100% eat and drink uh, both of those every single day. And uh, the last thing I wanted to mention about that trip, uh, so we got to C2E2 and uh, Revolution Brewing was there. And they actually had um, this like really cool 
layout in the middle of the of the showroom floor where it almost felt like you were like a tailgating spot and you could go and and get their beer and you had to stay in the area but they had like picnic tables and uh it looked like cornhole and stuff like that it was just a, a really cool experience um that i've not seen the one the few times i've been to like indie comic con i've I didn't see any beer or anything like that, so I, I just thought that was a, a pretty neat setup that they had. Jumping into the second part, uh, we got two news stories here. So this first one, this first one's a fucking doozy. This one I feel like can sometimes be hard to talk about. It shouldn't be, which is real stupid to say, uh, but that's the fucking world we live in nowadays, unfortunately. So uh, this this could go one of two ways. Um, you're either going to agree with us or you're never going to listen to the show again. Uh, I guess we'll find out. But, hey, these are the kind of stands you got to take sometimes. So the first one is the Bud Light Backlash. I'm sure everyone has heard about this one already um, because it's making its rounds on, on all the news channels thanks to Kid Rock. So Bud Light recently sent a custom Bud Light can to actor and TikTok star Dylan Mulvaney. And they are now receiving anti-trans backlash because of that. Let me repeat that. All they did was send a custom Bud Light can to a person. That was it. That's all they did. They're not selling these cans to anybody. They're not putting this person's face on their cans to be sold anywhere. The, the, this was just a nice thing that they did. The reason for the custom can, as they said, was it was intended to celebrate Dylan's milestone of transitioning. And uh, she was celebrating 365 days of womanhood. That's it. That's all we did. This is it. Per ABV in an article uh, that I got from BuzzFeed, Anheuser-Busch works with hundreds of influencers across our brands as one of many ways to authentically connect with audiences across various demographics, a spokesperson said in a statement shared with BuzzFeed News. From time to time, we produce unique commemorative cans for fans and for brand influencers like Dylan Mulvaney. This commemorative can was a gift to celebrate a personal milestone and is not for sale to the general public. What the fuck's the big deal? But because we live in a in a terrible timeline, a lot of people have taken to uh, Twitter, which is where you go yell into a void. Uh, and you know they're they're mad at Anheuser Busch for even associating themselves with with a trans individual. This is stupid. Sadly, not shocking. And uh, you know. We we are on we are on the side of of Bud Light and Dylan. We we are pro trans. Do whatever the fuck you want. Nobody who cares. There's other debates you can have about stuff, but this one is stupid because this is not this is not a backlash because Dylan is a terrible person that I'm aware of. I could not find any information like that. I I you know quote unquote did my own research before I jumped into this. Uh, trying to make sure that that there wasn't more to this. No, it's simply because this person is trans. That's it. That's the entire reason all of these people are mad. That's all. That's all I could find. You know, hopefully Bud Light leans into it and doesn't give in to the negative press and back away and, or anything stupid like that. Because I, I think I think you you need to to sometimes make a stand here and now's your chance. You know, you gave a, you gave a pretty ho-hum PR message of, of, Hey, this was just a commemorative can. It's, you know, we're not selling it to anybody. It was just to a, to a person, but because they even associated, you know, this is a problem. It's, it's ridiculous. So that one, that one whole, I'm sure this is going to continue to blow up. We may bring this back up next week, depending on what else, uh, has come out uh, since then. But as of right now, it's just a bunch of idiots yelling in the cloud. Uh, Kid Rock, I guess, went and... I don't know if he bought Bud Light or had it at his house, but then he decided to shoot it with a gun. And there's videos of people, like, pouring it out and all this other dumb shit. Uh, more power to you. 
it's a bunch of beer to waste. Like you could just drink that beer and and be done with it and then just not buy any. But like also just because you say you're not gonna buy any, like who's who's gonna remember this five months from now? Or what if you go to a place and they only serve Bud Light? Like these people are it's a crock of shit and they're not gonna follow through with their threats. It is what it is. Uh, second news story I saw, um, Guinness is shutting down its production brewery in Maryland. Uh, so this place just opened five years ago, so it's kind of crazy that they're already shutting down. 97 people are expected to be laid off per uh, Guinness's uh, PR or you know HR, whoever it was that, that uh, they spoke to in the story. Uh, the, there is a tap room, a 270-seat restaurant, and a small innovation brewery that is going to employ 100 people, and that's going to remain open. And that innovation brewery is going to be a 10-barrel system where they're going to do experimental beers that are only going to be available at the uh, the tap room there. So it is nice that they're at least keeping their footprint, but it still kind of sucks that they're shutting down the production brewery. Uh, that plant is scheduled to close in June, uh, which is right on the heels of when a, their new brewery, is opening up in Chicago. So there is there is a little kind of shittiness to that of, you know, you're you're opening up a new brewery. So who's who's to say like maybe there's some tax things that ran out. You know, there there's always a reason to shut these things down and it's it's usually has nothing to do with actual sales or anything like that. I feel like it's it's always something behind the scenes that, you know, they were granted, you know, tax tax deductions and stuff like that that are now running out so you know they couldn't get them back but I, it does i did read that guinness did help you know get a few um uh, few of the ridiculous maryland laws changed like how much how much beer can be produced and i think it was like uh contract brewing and stuff like that because they they have to do contract brewing technically for a, uh the the owners of guinness own a bunch of other breweries too. So it's like technically contract brewing within all of that. So they, they did help get a lot of those laws changed. So that's good. But obviously with them kind of leaving, um, you know, that, that could have potentially hurt, uh, the smaller breweries. If Maryland was to go back on any of these laws, I don't know why they would, but you just never know with politics nowadays. Uh, this was the first plant that Guinness had, uh, had opened in the United States since 1950. So kind of a kind of a sad day for for people who work there um, because, you know, you got experience now to go work at some other breweries. But I don't feel like there's I don't feel like breweries are just always hiring, you know, and I'm sure Guinness had what you would expect to be, you know, pretty good uh, salaries and benefits and stuff like that. You would just expect from a, a global company like that, that they would set set up shop for their employees pretty well. Last thing here, this is uh, just talking about what's what's happening around the state. I found just a few things. Um, nothing really stood out to me. So uh, if you got anything, let me know. Shoot it to us on on Instagram, especially if you are a uh, part of a brewery, you're, you're a worker for a brewery or something, and, and you happen to be listening, let us know. If you got, if you got some cool releases coming out, if you got uh, any, any events, coming out or you're going to be at any events let us know and uh and i'll add them to this list and and that way we can kind of start building this thing out but uh the first thing i saw which i thought was pretty cool was that four day ray on tuesdays from four to nine they donate five percent of their food sales to a charity every month i hadn't seen this before and i just noticed it the other night and i think that's kind of cool uh so this this month every tuesday they're they're giving to the chris center which uh, offers an innovative approach to teen wellness by connecting adolescents to nature and providing opportunities for human animal interaction. That to me just sounds badass. Uh, who does not love interacting with animals? Uh, it's it can be uh, pretty fun and obviously gives you a a sense of uh, whatever the the like chemical in your brain that makes you happy and stuff. I, I that's why everyone's got cats and dogs and everything else because it, it brings you some joy. And I, that can definitely happen, uh, with other animals too. So this is pretty cool, but, uh, just putting this out there because I, I think that's, that's a good cause. And, uh, 
and their food at four day Ray is pretty damn good. So, uh, very worth going out there for, for the food and the beer, uh, tax man brewing is doing death and taxes. That's on April 22nd, Saturday, April 22nd from 12 to four and tickets are on sale for that. And then a tap room, which we had, which is where we got the, the two transient beers, um, from episodes two and three, they are celebrating their two year anniversary. That's also on April 22nd. Uh, that event is called a fest. I, I think that's kind of cool that they, they keep with the a and then whatever it is afterwards. Uh, that's going to run from 12 PM until 5 PM. Uh, tickets are available for that. So, uh, uh, tax man is at their Bargersville location. And then a tap room is downtown Indy. So those two events are, are available. Uh, that's really all I found other than the, uh, uh, I did see, uh, this morning can redesigns for, uh, shoot, who was it? Uh, beer brewery. Those look slick, super clean. Whoever designed those. Whew. Good job. Good job. But, uh, but that's going to do it for today's show. If you got any, any information you want to share with us, just shoot it our way, either through Instagram or through our email barrelchatpodcast at gmail.com. But until next week, cheers.